Welcome back to News 46. Nye County Sheriff Sharon Morley hopes to get body cameras on her officers very soon. Where the funding is coming from is still up in the air. We're going to have some body cameras. I can't tell you exactly when that's going to be, but we have been talking with the company and we have been talking with the uh, uh, BOCC uh, individually and also uh, uh, Pam Webster, the county manager. And uh, we are going down that road. We're going down that road uh, very carefully, but we are going down that road. Eventually, uh, it's going to be uh, mandated by the state. We're almost positive of that. And uh, we want to be prepared. And so these have been helping uh, law enforcement and victims try to kind of figure out what went on when situations occur between them. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's a good way to record actual footage of just exactly what's happening on both sides, on the, the law enforcement officer side and also on the, uh, um, the citizen side. And so um, are you hoping to put these on every officer? And how many officers do we have on the street that we would be covering? Oh, around 70, 72, somewhere along in there. And so are you looking for, for the funds for this? Yes, we are looking for funds, and we're not sure just exactly where it's going to come from. Uh, we were talking about using capital funds, not sure that that's going to work. Uh, and we were also talking about using other funds that might become available here shortly. Um, but that's not for sure either. Uh, the only thing that is for sure is in the long run we will have body cameras. And uh, with the, uh, with the uh, program that we're, we're trying to go to, body cameras and the tasers both come together. Okay, and that's a certain company, right? Right, it's taser. Um, and so are they going to give a discount rate, or do you know? Is there any grants for this? Well, we're kind of working on that too, and uh, nothing is solidified. Um, but we're, we're just looking forward to getting this uh, actually operational. Have you had some instances where they would have come in handy? Oh, every day. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely every day. There is being held Sunday at the Moose Lodge. Our local Moose Lodge 808 is doing a donation dinner to benefit the Pahrump Disability Outreach Program, otherwise known, most familiar to people, PDOP. Yes, PDOP. Um, so you guys are going to have this dinner that's going to be uh, chicken fingers and mac and cheese and all, all these uh, things that, of course, um, uh, everybody loves. Yes, we we um, this is different than our regular spaghetti um, feeds because. Uh, we're trying to really involve the children, people with, with children, everybody. And so we figured mac and cheese is a children's favorite and chicken fingers and juice drinks, all that kind of fruit cups. So um, we think that'll be a great thing for the kids and people to come out for. And the women of the Moose are also having some games. And uh, are you going to have a bake sale? Yes. We're... Um, Bonnie Lundy is in charge of, we're going to have games like horse races for the kids, and I don't know for sure just what all kinds, but with prizes and stuff, a lot of fun for them. And um, also, as usual, our great bakers of the women of the moose is going to have, have a, a bake sale again. So. so this is donation only, right? Yes, donation only. So, All right, so August 14th, Sunday, at your regular time, which is 3 to 6. Yes, yes, it is. Where are you guys at? Okay, we're located at 1100 East 2nd Street, and uh, just down from the west from the library. And, and people can, uh, if they can't make the meal, they can still stop by, donate some money. They can also go to pdop.info to donate on their website. Yes, yes, that would be great. If you can't um, make it for the dinner, then yes, those those places would be so you can donate. So, Are you looking for some people to donate some prizes and uh, get involved in the games? Um, uh, we're going if people want to uh, get some little toys or stuff, I think for the games and things would be great. Um, we're having a blind draw, but that is being taken care of by Hilda from the Moose Lodge, as far as I know. So, right. so people um, can contact the Moose Lodge for more information. 
Um, yes, or they can contact me. Um, I'll give them what I know. Uh, Laurie Knight, 775-513-2638. And at least 22 passengers and two crew members were taken to a hospital for evaluation after a JetBlue flight experienced rough turbulence Thursday evening. JetBlue Flight 429 and Airbus A320 was headed from Boston to Sacramento, but had to be diverted to Rapid City, South Dakota at about 6.30 p.m. The A320 can seat up to 150 passengers. Witnesses said people were flying out of their seats and hitting their head on the ceiling, and it was very scary. It's believed that inclement weather played a role in creating the bumpy flying conditions. The plane encountered a line of thunderstorms in central South Dakota, according to a flight path analysis. After passing through a first storm, the plane came upon a second, which the pilot attempted to fly over or around. The significant turbulence was likely caused by one or both storms. News 46 will return in just a moment.